There is, they say, a world without persons. We've dreamed about it, thought about it, yearned for it, searched for it. And before you know it, it's right there all over. A world without persons where everything is real, and there are no persons. Not the world of the baby, mind you. That baby world, buckle cosmos of the baby until three months of age. There are no people in that world. There is no mother, there is no father, no others there, not even baby. There is only mouth. Excellent introceptivity without arm span, or field of vision. Full swimming pre-presence in the mouth, brimming with joy and anguish. There are no people in that world, surely, but it is not yet a world without persons. In that world, the people have vanished. In the world of the baby's mouth, on the other hand, people have not yet attained the kind of presence which would enable them to vanish, to no longer be there. In the world without persons, it is that the people have gone. With the acquisition of control over its own body, its eyes, its hands, its own motion, and the sealing of the corresponding neural channels in the brain through myelination, the baby finally, dramatically, triumphantly lays open its experience to one of the world outside. There are no persons as yet, but these are not too far in coming. Already people press themselves in, by tying, diapering, swaddling and color coding, which, simply, makes the baby look all the more cute. They that choose what in the world is to appear for the child, because there is protection to be done. The baby doesn't even know it, but others are already there for it, pressing themselves in, long before they can be present as such for it. Poor cute little Sun King baby, center for others before it can be center for itself. A baby ahead of itself and always in second place. We say the baby is ahead of itself, in that it is already pregnant with the germs of its future experience of the world. It is always in second place, however, in that at any given time it can only indicate vaguely by its conduct, trace out in outline or only in a sketch, what will at a future moment be experienced as obvious. From the advent of such a future, the baby was in a prior way ahead of itself. It will be that the present, this half-finished, expectant present, was for the baby or for any of us too, always held under sway from afar, by a power which will backwards grant it the meaning it didn't have for itself at the time. One day, it will be obvious that the baby and others were there all the time. Today, however, Mother and father, self and others were not there, but mother will have been there, father will have been there, the baby and others will have been there for it. Strictly speaking, the baby will have been ahead of itself in its grab towards the world. And the baby, today, and each of us, live in a present held under sway from both ends, from an anterior preparedness which only the future can expose and from a posterior disclosure which can only appear belatedly, after the fact. You walk into stadiums built for walkways and exits, maximum seating arrangement, stratified exposure to the stage, air conditioning and ventilation, sound amplification and leakage control, anti-scalper windows, money safety, zoning bylaws, storage of lights and props, seating comfort and durability, safety rails for Stairs and balconies, mixing booth, light show we can shift, publicity, repair, marketing, water, parking, and access to public transport. You walk into the stadium, the exposure happens, then you are let back outside. Everyone uses the same two doors. You all heard and saw the clues and found them. You were made happy or disappointed tonight because you entrusted your time off to the act. You felt something, saw the other people, and now you're different from everyone you meet outside.